In the heart of the galaxy, where stars clustered in brilliant constellations, stood the pinnacle of military knowledge, the alien academy known as Valkoria Prime. This revered institution was a melting pot of the brightest minds from a hundred species, each one seeking to master the art of warfare. Here knowledge was not just power, it was survival. The academy's grand halls echoed with the steps of cadets who had come from across the galaxy, each bringing with them the strategies and traditions of their home worlds. It was a place where the future leaders of empires learned not only how to wage war but how to win it. Among the diverse student body, there was a palpable energy, a mix of pride and determination, as they prepared to absorb the wisdom of the galaxy's most formidable tacticians. But today, there was an undercurrent of something new, curiosity, laced with a hint of unease. The Academy had announced an unprecedented course, one that had never been offered before. The subject, human warfare tactics. The news had spread like wildfire, sparking debates in the mess halls and whispers in the corridors. Who were these humans, these deathworlders, who had emerged from a backwater planet on the fringes of known space? What could they possibly teach the best warriors the galaxy had to offer? As the cadets filed into the grand lecture hall, their attention was immediately drawn to the figure standing at the front, a human, older than most, with eyes that seemed to carry the weight of a thousand battles. The room fell silent, all eyes fixed on this mysterious instructor. His name was Colonel James Hargrave, a veteran of countless wars, and his reputation had preceded him. He had fought in conflicts that most in the room had only read about in history texts. But it was not just his battle record that intrigued the students. It was the way he carried himself, with a quiet confidence that suggested he had seen and done things that would make even the bravest of them flinch. The anticipation in the room was almost tangible as the colonel surveyed his audience. He could see the doubt in their eyes, the unspoken question of why they should bother learning from a species as young and seemingly insignificant as humanity. But Hargrave knew better. He had faced enemies that outnumbered him, had stood his ground against overwhelming odds, and had survived where many had not. And now, he was here to pass on that knowledge to those who might one day need it the most. The aliens, with their varied forms and features, could not hide their skepticism. The Itherin with its many eyes blinked in rapid succession, a sign of confusion. The towering, armored Diarkarn barely contained a snort of disbelief. The slender, Almost ethereal Zyre leaned forward, curiosity peaked but still doubtful. They had all been trained in the most advanced tactics known to their species, had seen simulations of battles fought in the void of space and on hostile planets. What could this human offer them that they didn't already know? But there was something in the colonel's gaze that held their attention, a certain intensity that suggested he was not to be underestimated. As he began to speak, his voice was calm but carried an undercurrent of authority that demanded respect. He spoke of Earth, of its history, a world teeming with life, yet constantly at war with itself. The cadets listened, some with interest, others with a growing sense of unease, as Hargrave recounted the endless cycles of conflict that had shaped humanity. Despite their doubts, the cadets couldn't help but be drawn in by the colonel's words. He spoke not just of battles won and lost, but of the strategies that had led to victory, of the ingenuity and adaptability that had allowed humans to survive on a world that was as much an enemy as it was a home. He talked of wars fought on every imaginable terrain, deserts, jungles, frozen wastelands, and urban sprawls. Each scenario had demanded a different approach, a different way of thinking. This was not the clean, orderly warfare the cadets were used to. It was chaotic, unpredictable, and brutally effective. The room grew quieter as Hargrave continued, his words sinking in. The aliens began to realize that this was not just another lecture, but something far more profound. They were not simply learning about human warfare, they were being prepared for something greater. Hargrave hinted at the darkening horizon, at conflicts that were brewing in the galaxy that would require every ounce of knowledge they could gather. And in those coming battles, understanding how humans fought, how they thought, could mean the difference between victory and annihilation. Colonel Hargrave began the next session by diving straight into the heart of human history, offering a glimpse into the conflicts that had defined Earth for millennia. He spoke of wars that had raged across continents, 
of empires that had risen and fallen in the blood-soaked pages of history. From the brutal campaigns of Alexander the Great to the sweeping conquests of the Mongol Empire, each conflict had left an indelible mark on humanity. But it was not just the scale of these wars that was significant, it was the way they had been fought. Hargrave introduced the concept of Total War, a strategy where every aspect of society was mobilized for the conflict. In these wars, there were no boundaries, no safe havens, entire populations were drawn into the struggle, and the line between soldier and civilian blurred. This was the reality of human warfare, relentless, all-encompassing, and devastatingly effective. To illustrate his point, Hargrave delved into specific case studies, each one showcasing a different facet of human ingenuity in battle. He began with the guerrilla warfare in Vietnam, a conflict where a smaller, less technologically advanced force had managed to hold its own against a global superpower. The aliens listened in stunned silence as Hargrave described how the Viet Song had used the dense jungles to their advantage, employing hit-and-run tactics that confounded their enemies. The concept of fighting a war of attrition, of wearing down a stronger opponent through sheer persistence, was a stark contrast to the decisive battles the aliens were used to. Next, Hargrave moved on to the psychological warfare of World War II, where deception and manipulation had played as crucial a role as firepower. He recounted the intricate web of misinformation that had led to the success of D-Day, where the Allies had managed to convince the Nazis that the invasion would occur at a different location entirely. This was warfare fought not just on the battlefield but in the minds of the enemy, where victory could be achieved without firing a single shot. The aliens were visibly disturbed by the idea that war could be waged so effectively without direct confrontation, a concept alien to their more straightforward methods of combat. Finally, Hargrave turned to the ancient Battle of Thermopylae, where a small force of Spartans had held off a vastly larger Persian army for days. The aliens were fascinated by the strategic brilliance of using terrain to neutralize numerical superiority a tactic that relied on discipline and courage as much as on clever planning. This was not the grand, sweeping warfare they had expected to study. It was precise, calculated, and deadly efficient. As Hargrave spoke, the reactions from the alien students were telling. The Ithrans' many eyes blinked in rapid succession, a sure sign of their unease. The Diarkarn, known for their brute strength and direct combat style, shifted uncomfortably clearly disturbed by the idea that wars could be won with cunning rather than sheer force. The Zyre, with their emphasis on honor in battle, seemed almost dismayed at the lengths to which humans would go to secure victory. These tactics, guerrilla warfare, psychological manipulation, strategic positioning, were not just foreign to them, they were unsettling. The idea that humans would exploit every possible advantage, no matter how unconventional, challenged their deeply held beliefs about the nature of warfare. Sensing the unease in the room, Hargrave paused, allowing his words to sink in. Then, in a calm, measured tone, he invited the students to share their thoughts. What followed was a heated discussion, with some aliens expressing outright disbelief that such tactics could be considered honorable or even necessary. Others, however, began to see the value in these strategies, recognizing that in the chaos of war, Survival often depended on thinking outside the traditional norms. Hargrave listened patiently, occasionally interjecting with questions that forced the students to think critically about their own approaches to warfare. Could they afford to ignore these lessons, knowing that their enemies might not? Was it better to lose honorably, or to survive by any means necessary? The colonel didn't offer answers. He simply guided the conversation, pushing the students to confront the uncomfortable realities of warfare. By the end of the session, the mood in the room had shifted. The alien cadets, once confident in their own superiority, now found themselves questioning everything they had been taught. They left the lecture hall deep in thought, each one grappling with the realization that human warfare was not just about brute strength or advanced technology. It was about survival, and in the end, that was the most important lesson of all. Colonel Hargrave's next lesson delved into a realm of warfare that was perhaps the most unsettling for the alien students, the psychological aspect. He began by explaining that, for humans, war was not fought solely on the battlefield. The mind was often the first and most critical front in any conflict. 
Psychological warfare, he explained, was about more than just winning battles. It was about breaking the enemy's will to fight, sowing confusion and fear, and turning the tide of war before a single shot was fired. Misinformation, propaganda, and fear-mongering were weapons as potent as any gun or bomb. These tactics were designed to undermine the enemy's confidence, to make them question their leaders, their cause, and even their own sanity. It was warfare waged in the shadows, where victory was measured not by body counts, but by the number of enemies who laid down their arms without a fight. Hargrave provided specific examples to illustrate his points. He spoke of D-Day, where the Allies executed one of the most successful deceptions in military history. Through a complex web of false intelligence, they convinced the Nazis that the invasion would occur at a different location, allowing the real invasion to proceed with far less resistance. This, Hargrave explained, was psychological warfare at its finest, a masterstroke that saved countless lives by outthinking the enemy before the battle even began. He also mentioned the Cold War, a conflict that was as much about perception as it was about power. During this period, espionage, propaganda, and the constant threat of mutually assured destruction kept entire populations in a state of fear and uncertainty. The enemy was often unseen, the battles fought in the minds of millions rather than on physical fronts. These tactics created an atmosphere of paranoia and suspicion, eroding the morale of nations without a single bullet being fired. The alien students struggled to grasp the full implications of these tactics. For many of them, Warfare was a matter of honor and direct confrontation. The idea of defeating an enemy by attacking their mind, by exploiting their fears and insecurities, was almost incomprehensible. It was a form of warfare that seemed to them both underhanded and, in some ways, terrifying. The Itherans, with their hive mind mentality, found the concept of deception especially difficult to understand. In their culture, communication was open and honest the idea of deliberately misleading others was foreign to them. The Diarkarn, who valued strength above all else, saw psychological warfare as a sign of weakness, an avoidance of true battle. But as Hargrave continued, even they began to see the logic in these tactics, realizing that in some situations, breaking the enemy's spirit was more effective than breaking their bodies. To drive the lesson home, Hargrave conducted simulated exercises designed to give the students a taste of psychological warfare. In these scenarios, the alien cadets were tasked with applying what they had learned, using misinformation and deception to gain an advantage over a simulated enemy force. The results were mixed. Some of the students quickly adapted to the new tactics, employing clever ruses to outmaneuver their opponents. Others struggled their cultural instincts clashing with the need to be deceptive and manipulative. But even those who failed the exercise came away with a newfound respect for the power of psychological warfare. They realized that in the chaos of battle, the mind could be the most dangerous battlefield of all. Colonel Hargrave transitioned to a discussion on guerrilla warfare, a tactic that had allowed humans to turn the tables on seemingly invincible foes throughout history. He explained that guerrilla warfare was born out of necessity, often used by smaller, less equipped forces against powerful adversaries. It was a strategy of the weak, relying on mobility, surprise, and intimate knowledge of the terrain. Hargrave cited the American Revolution, where colonists used guerrilla tactics to harass and outmaneuver the far superior British forces. He also mentioned the Cuban Revolution, where Fidel Castro's forces employed similar tactics to overthrow a much larger army. In these conflicts, the ability to strike swiftly and then disappear into the landscape had proven more effective than direct confrontation, allowing outnumbered forces to gradually wear down their enemies. Hargrave then shifted to the broader theme of adaptability in warfare, a trait that he argued was at the core of human success in battle. He explained that throughout history, humans had faced numerous situations where conventional strategies had failed, forcing them to innovate and improvise. During World War II, for instance, the Allies had to quickly adapt to the German blitzkrieg tactics, developing new strategies and technologies to counter the sudden and overwhelming assaults. In the Pacific theater, American forces had to learn how to fight in dense jungles and across vast oceans, environments that were entirely alien to them. These challenges had forced them to rethink their approach, 
leading to the development of island hopping strategies and the effective use of aircraft carriers. Hargrave emphasized that human adaptability was not just about changing tactics. It was about turning disadvantages into strengths. He spoke of the Battle of Stalingrad, where the harsh Russian winter, initially seen as a curse, became a weapon that the Soviets used to trap and defeat the German army. He also highlighted the use of simple tools, like improvised explosive devices, by insurgent groups in more recent conflicts, showing how resourcefulness could level the playing field against technologically superior forces. This ability to adapt, to change plans on the fly, was something that had allowed humans to survive and thrive on their dangerous, unpredictable planet. To give the alien cadets a practical understanding of these concepts, Hargrave organized a series of training exercises. The students were divided into small teams and placed in simulated environments that mimicked the challenging conditions where guerrilla tactics would be most effective. They were tasked with using the terrain to their advantage, setting ambushes, and avoiding detection by a larger, more heavily armed force. The exercises proved difficult for many of the students. Accustomed to straightforward, honorable combat, they struggled with the idea of striking from the shadows and then fleeing before their enemy could respond. Some teams were too rigid, sticking to their pre-planned strategies even when the situation called for quick thinking and adaptability. However, as the exercises progressed, a shift began to occur. The students who initially struggled started to see the value in being flexible and thinking creatively. They began to adapt, using their unique abilities and knowledge of the simulated environments to outmaneuver their opponents. The Diarkarn, who had initially dismissed guerrilla tactics as cowardly, found that their strength could be a powerful tool in setting effective traps. The Zyre, who prized honor in direct combat, realized that their agility made them excellent at quick strikes and rapid withdrawals. As the course neared its conclusion, Colonel Hargrave stood before his students one last time. He began by revisiting the core principles that had been taught throughout the lessons, guerrilla warfare, psychological tactics, and the critical importance of adaptability. He reminded the cadets that these strategies were not just theoretical exercises, but the distillation of hard-earned wisdom from countless battles. Hargrave emphasized that the true essence of warfare was not in the weapons or the soldiers, but in the ability to outthink and outmaneuver one's opponent. He warned them that underestimating their enemy, or failing to adapt to new circumstances, could lead to catastrophic failure. The lessons they had learned were not just tools for victory. They were essential for survival. Then, with a grave tone, Hargrave revealed what had been kept from them until this moment. The galaxy, he said, was teetering on the edge of a massive conflict, one that would dwarf any war they had studied. The signs were already there, in the increasing tensions between major powers, the secret alliances being formed, and the sudden rush to develop new weapons. The colonel explained that this war would not be like the ones they had known before. It would be total involving every species, every resource, every strategy. The cadets, many of whom had assumed this course was purely academic, now understood that they were being prepared for something very real and very imminent. The room was heavy with the realization that the galaxy's future could very well depend on the knowledge they had gained here. Hargrave didn't sugarcoat the situation. He challenged the cadets to take what they had learned and apply it, not just in theory but in the reality that awaited them. He urged them to think critically, to be ready to adapt at a moment's notice, and to use every tool at their disposal, no matter how unconventional it might seem. The colonel's voice was firm as he stressed the urgency of the situation. The war would come whether they were ready or not, and it would demand everything they had learned and more. This was their moment, their test, and the stakes could not be higher. Hargrave's words cut through any lingering doubts, leaving the cadets with a clear and unmistakable mission, to be prepared for the conflict that was about to engulf the galaxy. As the session ended, the cadets filed out of the hall, each one carrying the weight of what they had just learned. The academy, once a place of theoretical exercises and hypothetical scenarios, now felt like the first line of defense in a war that would soon become all too real. The lessons they had absorbed, lessons about the brutality of human warfare, the importance of psychological tactics, and the necessity of adaptability, were no longer abstract concepts. 
They were the tools they would need to survive the coming storm. As they departed, many of the cadets found themselves reflecting on the gravity of the situation. The knowledge they had gained was powerful, but it also carried a heavy burden. They understood that the strategies they had learned could mean the difference between victory and annihilation, not just for themselves, but for their entire species. The looming galactic conflict was no longer a distant possibility. It was a rapidly approaching reality. And as they left the academy grounds, the cadets knew that the future of the galaxy would soon rest in their hands. The course had ended, but the real test was just beginning.